Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about fractions. We're talking about the parts that make up a fraction as well as how to simplify fractions. So a fraction looks like this, 7 over 8. Now the top part of the fraction and the bottom part of the fraction actually have specific names. And those names are numerator for the top and denominator for the bottom. Pardon my spelling if it's not great, but uh, that's what we call them. The numerator up top, the denominator on the bottom. Now that's not to say I'm never gonna say the top of the fraction or the bottom of the fraction. That's just kind of easy to say and easy to refer to. But scientifically, mathematically speaking, this is what they're called. Now a fraction like this is what we call in simplest form, meaning that it can't be written any easier, quote unquote, than it is. A lot of times a good way to think about simplest form is actually having your fraction written with the smallest numbers possible in the numerator and denominator. So I'm gonna write a fraction not in simplest form, and then I am going to write a number, or, and we're gonna talk about, sorry, how to get it turned into simplest form. Although first I should probably write that definition. Simplest form in fractions is considered when the numerator and denominator have no common factors. You may be thinking, what's a common factor? A factor is a number that something is divisible by. For example, 8 is divisible by 2, and divisible by 4, and also divisible by 8 itself. Now, if the numerator also had one of those factors in common, meaning if the numerator was also divisible by 4 or 2 or 8, then they would have common factors, and we would actually want to go ahead and simplify or put it in simplest form. However, 7 doesn't have any of those factors. It only has a factor of 7, right? Other than 1, of course. So neither the numerator and or the numerator and denominator do not have any common factors, therefore it is in simplest form. So like I was saying a minute ago, I'm going to put a not simplest form one on the board. Let's say we have 6 over 18. You want to take a look at that fraction and think, what factors do they both have? And of course, we're not talking about a factor of 1. We're talking about non-1 factors. So 6 has factors of 2, 3, and 6, right? 18 has factors of 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Those are all the numbers that it's divisible by. And we want to figure out what kind of factors do these have in common, if any. Yeah, you'll notice they share some factors here, right? They share 2, 3, and 6. Now, the fact of the matter is we can take out whichever one of these we want. But if we don't want to repeat this process, we need to take out their greatest common factor. That's probably a term you've heard in some other classes. Greatest common factor. The largest number that something shares. The largest number that numbers are divisible by. Uh, the two numbers share, that kind of thing. So in that, this case, the greatest common factor is actually going to be 6. So that's the number we want to take out or divide from each part of the fraction. So I'm going to do that. 6 divided by 6 and 18 divided by 6. Now 6 divided by 6, a number divided by itself, is just going to be 1. And then 18 divided by 6 is going to give us 3. So we find that 1 over 3, or 1 third, is actually our simplest form way 
of writing 6 over, eight, uh, 6 over 18. If you were to actually put both of these in a calculator, if you were to type 6 divided by 18, you would get 0.33333 repeating as your decimal answer. You'd get the exact same thing if you type in 1 divided by 3 in the calculator, 0.3333 repeating again. This shows that each of these are equivalent ways of writing the same fraction. But we like, at least mathematically, we like to write it this way because it has what we consider simpler numbers, or really just smaller numbers. The numbers 1 and 3 are a lot easier to look at and work with than the numbers 6 and 18. So I would definitely recommend, whenever you're trying to simplify fractions, make a list of their factors. Try to figure out what the largest one they have in common is, and then divide those out. Again, it's possible if you, don't, if you accidentally don't choose that largest one to factor out a smaller one. You just may then notice that the fraction you got after simplifying still has factors in common between the numerator and denominator, and you have to repeat the process again. If you guys have any questions about this process, simplifying fractions, or about how fractions are named, what their parts are, feel free to drop a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.